Hello, thank you for tuning in to my video on how to test your tachometer. This specific tachometer is off of a 1972 Chevrolet Chevelle, and I'm currently undergoing a SS dash conversion, and I bought a cluster, and I wanted to make sure all the gauges worked. So I came up with a way that you can test your tachometer. The tools you'll need for this video is pretty simple, not a whole lot. A pair of needle nose pliers, 5 16 socket, quarter inch drive ratchet, and this is not necessary, but it is sure handy. Um, just a little cap. Uh, I think this came off of brake clean or carb clean, just to keep all your bolts and your washers in, keep them organized, and keep them from falling off the workbench. So first things first, you're going to want to obviously remove your tachometer from the vehicle or cluster. And I had already previously test, tested this one and the circuit board on it was no good. So this is the new circuit board I got from eBay from a seller called uh, Cajun Tack Shop. Fast shipping. Guys know what they're talking about. And I think the circuit board ran me back around 20 something dollars or so. So totally good deal. And it comes calibrated to your tack you just tell them your max rpm and plug and play so let's get down to it um tools you'll need it's quarter inch ratchet and a 5 16 socket it's basically it pretty simple we're going to start by removing the back here these two nuts and hold it in place <clears throat> There's a bolt on the other side that just pulls out. Be careful not to lose. <clears throat> There's a little washer and then a plastic washer like this that keeps your 12 volts positive away from the ground. If that ever touches, it would not be a good thing. Lots of sparks. This last one out here. Dropped one. Uh, so to remove it, uh, you want to be careful. In the center of the um, circuit board is the ground pin for the entire assembly. So you just want to carefully lift up on the board. It'll give a little resistance, and then it will just kind of pop out of there just like that. Untangle the wires, and there you go. You got the circuit board out. So after you separate the circuit board from your assembly, you want to first unplug these two wires, the white wire and the black wire. They both go to the tachometer movement. So all you do is you just pull it out. There'll be a little resistance there. And you do not have to take note of which wire went where because on the new circuit board it tells you. But if you're gonna reuse this circuit board, or repair this circuit board, be sure to take a picture of where each wire went, because that'll be important. So once you get that out, it's completely free. And then I'll remove these feet, and it's the same process as the wires. You just pull it out gently. There's one. Get the other one out here. There you go. And that's it. It's free. You could see someone came in here and did some repairs with some hay wires and something and maybe that's why it didn't work <laughs> so once that's out you're ready for your new circuit board you could see on the new circuit board here that everything is labeled and it tells you where everything goes which is super convenient got the coil wire your 12 volts the white wire the black wire the two wires that go to the movement and then your ground and that's it so with the new circuit board um, i'm going to first put the feet on so one of the feet will go on the coil, one marked coil. And this has a pretty loose fit. So I'm gonna get a pair of needle nose pliers. I'm gonna very, very carefully squeeze the two tabs on the feet together. Give it a little more of a snug fit because I don't like the way that felt. 
which one? So I'm gonna put this one on the one marked coil. There we go, nice tight fit. Get that on there. And then I'm gonna get one and put it on 12 volts. That one's also pretty loose. So I will do the same thing. Squeeze that together. Put that on 12 volts. Okay, next I'm gonna reattach the wires that go to the movement. Pretty self-explanatory. The white obviously goes on the one marked white. Just out of precaution, I'm also gonna squeeze pins together, or the two ends together here, and get a nice tight fit. Go. And then the black wire will obviously go on the one marked black. So I'm just going to squeeze these two together. Okay. Put that there. Good tight fit. So it's not going to pop out while you're screaming down the road doing burnouts or whatnot. Now it's time to put the circuit board back in. So I'm going to take pliers and do the same thing on the ground pin. Just very carefully squeeze them together. If you go too hard, it'll break off and then you'll have to figure out another way to <laughs> reattach it. So I'm gonna find the pin on here marked ground, which is the center pin between the white and the black wire. Lift up the assembly here. I'm gonna carefully feed it in there and line it up there we go put a little pressure and pop it right on in easy peasy and then you could see the two feet they got to align here for your bolts so i'm just going to turn it over here and then bring the feet down just a little bit and i'll be ready to reattach the fasteners for it so i'll dump out my little bucket here and get a bolt. The bolt head goes on the inside because it's a, you want a stud to stick out because that's how it will attach when it's inside the car. Let's get the first one in. Get that second one in here. It's kind of tough to get the second one in there. It goes. Funky angle. So first you want to get your plastic washers, the insulators those here and then the regular flat washers will go here and then your nuts goes in thread it on get my ratchet here and you do not need to go tight super tight on these Let's make them snug so it's not going to come loose when you're driving down the road. It should be good. If you go too tight, you may split the plastic washer. It could have a short to ground or who knows what. Something not good. And now we're ready for testing. Uh, okay, so now we're ready to test the new circuit board here. So over here I have set up, um, well, all, what I have here is a function generator and I have it set on the square wave because that's what your ignition coil will be given out when it's in the car. So this will basically simulate your battery and your engine running. And down here I have a DC power supply set at 12 volts, which is what will be uh, in your car, obviously. So to test it, we'll come back here and I wrote coil and 12 volts on the back so you can easily see what I'm hooking what up to. We'll start with the power supply. I get my 12 volt positive and hook it up to the 12 volt on the back of the circuit board. And I'll just ground it over here. And then I will get my square wave wires and I will hook the red up to the coil wire or the coil stud of the uh, circuit board. And then the ground, oh, this is a chassis, the chassis of it should work like that. And then we are ready for testing. All right, 
Okay, so we are all set up here with the function generator and power supply. So I'm just gonna switch the power on here. No sparks, no smoke, that's good. And a, I will start by changing the frequency of the square wave. So the higher I go, there we go, you can see the RPM gauge start to move. There we go, nice and smooth. We'll take it all the way to red line, even though my engine will never see 7,000 RPM. But it's nice to have that ability. It's right to 7,000. Bring it right back down. And we can see it goes through. Full sweep, doesn't get hung up on anything. Nice and smooth. And right back down to zero where it should be. Um, I came up with a calculation to test the accuracy. Uh, someone will have to leave a comment if I'm wrong, which I'm usually wrong, but I believe, uh, so in a V8 application, which is this, uh, one turn, one full rotation of the engine would produce four sparks. So if you're at 6,000 RPM and you times that by four sparks, you get 24,000. And if you divide that by 60 seconds, should get 400 sparks a minute or 400 hertz. So if I turn this knob to roughly around the 400 hertz mark, right there, my knob's a little off, but there is 6,000 RPM. So you can see it's pretty accurate. So you can do that conversion with any RPM really, just take the uh, four sparks times whatever RPM, you can do 4,000, 3,000, and then just divide that by 60. And then you can test the accuracy of your RPM gauge. So that's basically it. It's pretty simple. If you have a uh, function generator, it's very easy. Uh, if not, and if you want to get into, you know, testing signals and voltages and all that stuff, Amazon's got a pretty wide selection of function generators you can get. And they're not terribly expensive. They're very handy tools to have if you're working with electronics a lot. But as we can see, we got a new circuit board in. It's all ready to go. It's ready to be back, reinstalled back into the cluster and ready to start rocking in the Chevelle. Um, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for tinkering with T and stay tuned for the next video.